It's gone wrong. Take a shit, but we're good. <laughs> Frodo. <laughs> Frodo. That's what. That's what. That's what we doing right now. That's what. That's what we doing right now, Chase. <laughs> we Chase. dudes. We dudes. That, that's what. For real. Well, actually, like. Nope. I'm not gonna say that. I was gonna say something, and I'm not gonna say it. It's better for everyone if I don't say it. How about that? <laughs> Yeah. All right, you ready? Yeah, man. We live, yo. We live, yo. We all the time, on. y'all. Chase be crying, y'all. <laughs> all the time, y'all. Okay. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Scarfinger, and this is Scarcast on Woo Woo. And uh, we are back in the building in these uh, Corona streets. We ain't got no masks on. But we're 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 converse, you know. We we, I, I think we're good on the um how close. I mean, our videos are pretty close on the stream, but I, I don't think that matters, bro. I, I you would swear the way some people have been acting that we probably should be wearing masks and gloves right now. <laughs> like that's how people that's how people have been acting. Um, the the governor just said that they want us to wear masks out, out in public, and I'm just kind of like. No, if I ain't got this shit, I'm not wearing a mask. It didn't they tell us that in the beginning? They was like, if you don't have this shit, you're wearing a mask for no reason. Yeah. So like, so the why mask would I, why keeps would I it from on? going out, not in. Right. Yo, let me tell you, did, um, you're not on Facebook that much, right? Not too much. I mean, I scroll a little, little bit sometimes, but have you seen my post about the masks? No. I have felt I never, never, never in my life have I felt so alone in a situation than when I'm at work and I am reminded that I am the young person. Oh yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like that. yeah, the the bandanas. Yeah, yeah. So I'll get I'll get back to that for anyone who's not on Facebook and who didn't see it, and also who didn't hear the last single simulcast because I was on that. Um, I told us there too, but you know about the. <laughs> You know that time where you get reminded the 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 wrong way of why you don't like great Gatorade? You know what I mean? Like that's what ha- that's what keeps happening to me at work. Have you ever had that feeling? Have you ever had great Gatorade? I don't even I don't even remember they even selling great Gatorade. Good because it's fucking disgusting. But sometimes you're in the store and you see great Gatorade and you're like, yo, I'm gonna get some great Gatorade. And then like the moment you have some, you instantly remember that you don't fucking like great Gatorade. But it always sounds like a good fucking idea until you actually have it. Like mango, mango anything always sounds like a much better idea than it is in practice. Mango anything always sounds so much better than it is actually having something that's mango flavored or actual fucking mangoes. Like, am, am I the only one with mangoes? Well, the the mango, I don't know if I'll rock with just like straight up mango, but it's going to be mixed with something like mango. Uh, what does it normally go with? I don't know. But I, I've had some pretty good mango stuff, but it's always, you know, mango something else. Mango 
in, in my in, in to me now this is just to me mm-hmm. mangoes are always always better in thought than they are in practice so mangoes are like communism Mangoes, mangoes are mangoes are communism. That is the current show title. Unless we, uh, unless we, unless we come up with something else. But this, but that, that feeling is what happens to me at work all the time. Because I have these moments where I'm reminded that I am the youngest person of the office staff by at least ten years. So, so like you know, my coworker got a thing, wanted to make some masks. Uh, I come to work one morning and there's a whole bunch of green bandanas on the, on her desk. Cause she's going to use those to make some masks. And I'm like, yo son, we repping for the Grove. And I'm like really fucking excited about this. Like, yo, we repping for the Grove. Cause she's making bandanas. She making masks out of green bandanas. And I'm like, we repping for the Grove. And I say this while everybody, pretty much everybody of the office staff is kind of standing around. Not a single person knows what I'm talking about. Not a one. And it is the loneliest feeling you could have in an environment that you go to almost every day. Like, I mean, it's just, it was just bad, bruh. It was real bad. Like, I felt so lonely. Like, I I was like, so like, I had to like explain it. And at the time, there was a, there was a gentleman that was fixing the alarm. Um, and, I believe that he got it because when I said it, he kind of chuckled a bit, but he didn't say a word. Like he just kind of stayed to himself. And in that moment of having to explain this from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, mm-hmm. like it, it almost felt like the, the, the ending music from the Incredible Hulk TV show was playing. Like I just, I was just instantly sad and it was just like, do, 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 do. Like I got a bag over my shoulder walking down the street trying to get to the next place and not hulk out. You know what I mean? Like it was that bad. It was so sad. Like that, 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 and like, and like I said, those moments just kind of remind me that I'm the young one and it kind of sucks being the young one. Well, um, and what, you what should enjoy the mangoes, mangoes are communism. Yeah. You, or you, like communism. You, um, you can enjoy the times when you do feel young because there's a lot of times when you feel old. I feel old around, I feel old around like the rest of y'all. Like when I'm on, um, when I'm, when I'm online or I'm playing a game with, with some friends or my fam and stuff like that, I feel old then because then I am the old person. But at work, I am the young person and that's a weird, it's a weird situation. Um, I had an, I had one of those situations while playing the division the other day. So I'm playing the division, right? I'm playing with my cousin and his homeboy. Now the homeboy is my age, but like there's been a lot of, um, like catalog battles. People call them beat battles, but there's been a lot of catalog battles. Um, it on Instagram live. And I have loved all of this stuff. Um, there, there's, only one of them I didn't like because it's is one of those things to where it's like the people were not a good match for each other. That was the Scott Storch and uh, Manny Fresh battle. They were not a good match for each other because like if you're not if you are not from the South or you're not Southern, a lot of those songs that Manny Fresh were playing are not huge to you. But if you like Southern hip hop, like those are classics like you know what i mean like some of those songs are absolute classics and but like if you're not if you're not one of us like that that doesn't occur to you and i think that's why that they were not matched very well um and and it was a little weird because scott storch uh was playing a whole bunch of songs that we attribute to other people like he was playing dre songs that songs that we attribute to Dre, songs we attribute to Timbaland and stuff like that. Um, I, I get it that he was a part of these songs, but like, you know, like the, the moment you, the moment you're doing a, a producer battle with somebody and you put on Cry Me a River, like Cry Me a River is a Timbaland song, uh, is a Timbaland song. Like, am I, am I wrong about this? Like, 
Cry Me a River is a Timberland song. Like, I get it. Maybe you, maybe you were a part of this. I get it. But like, Cry Me a River is a Timberland song, dog. It's kind of like me to where like used to be with iTunes, but now I've I started using like like Music B and stuff. If I'm going to like, but I'm all I've always been very on trying to organize my music, and sometimes, especially when it comes to hip hop, it's really tough because um, a lot of songs have a lot of different people and a lot of different collaborations. So you have to think to yourself, who is the main one of this? And then that will be the album artist. You know what I mean? So, right. or like if there's a split to where it's two different people, which one is it more? Even though it's really not. <laughs> t- typically you go with whose album it was on. Yeah, that's what I normally go with. But there are times where it's an actual split. It's actually. Their both logos are on the album, you know, like there's like two songs by mm-hmm. one and two songs by the other, but who is it more? So, Cause I hate it to where if the, if there's like this artist, but then I also have another category, this, this artist and this artist. I hate that. I don't know. I, I know it's okay, but for some reason it just gets mm-hmm. to me and I just want it to be organized. Yeah. Why, better. Where they make a whole new category off of the mixture when it's just like, no, nah, this is ludicrous song. I get it. So and so <laughs> featured on this song and they are just as prominent on the song as the other person. But like, come on, man. Like, like, we'll, we'll, I'll just throw out a song. Like, Lovers and Friends, like that played during the, um, the, what you call it battle, the, um, the, the T Pain and Lil John battle, and which was probably my second favorite one of all of these. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so like technically that is Usher's song, right? But Ludacris real is, is, is a match. Like, you know, like Usher sings the singing, uh, uh, Usher does the singing stuff. Ludacris does the rapping stuff. They both make the song. And like Lil Jon actually has a rap on the song. So like, who do you attribute that song to? Right. And you just technically, technically is Lil Jon's song. So like. Yeah, that's the thing is like, even on Lil Jon's albums, there's songs a, that are a shit ton of features. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where like he don't he, he I mean that's the whole Dave Chappelle joke that where like everybody else does stuff and he just says yeah yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> but um, yeah but like here's here's I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna talk about this now since we're already here mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you that battle was monumental and to the gaming public if you don't understand like who these people are and like the hits that they have. Um, have you ever played Fight Night? Yes. Fight Night Round Three? Maybe. It's probably the best Fight Night because that was before they did Fight Night Champion when they tried to make a story and all that other dumb shit. But like Fight Night Round Three, have you ever been in a really like a a really serious battle with somebody who knows how to parry you perfectly? And like you keep throwing haymakers, they parry that shit and just give you that shit right back, and you just feel like you can't do nothing. That's pretty much me every fighting game ever. But continue. Okay. <laughs> that that was T Pain this battle. T Pain has hits, bruh. Like all kinds of hits. But the problem is T Pain went first. And Lil John is an excellent counterpuncher. Excellent, I tell you. Mm-hmm. And every time we was, you know, like it was a twenty round, it was a twenty round battle. They both played a song, you know, they each played a song for twenty rounds, and we think that T Pain maybe got four, and that's being nice to T Pain, like. Someone can call this, someone can call this like a total destruction. Like, you know, I'm, we're being nice and giving T-Pain four of those. And there, and, but it was just like T-Pain like had it. Like he would play a song first and was just like, I have no idea what can beat this. And then Lil John would play something and it would be like, yep, that, that, that song right there, that beats this. 
You know what I mean? Like every single time. And like the 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 cool part about it is my two favorite battles is 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 that one and my favorite favorite battle is a songwriter battle between Jonte Austin and Neo. Now, Jonte Austin and Neo they 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 both got some real real hits that they put their pin game to. You know what I mean? Like it's there's some there's some stuff like most people don't even know who Jonte Austin is, but once he started playing those like Mariah records that he bought that he wrote and all that kind of stuff, like like nigga Jonte Austin wrote We Belong Together, like for real? Like, you know what I mean? Like he wrote that. And like, you know what I mean? Like, and most people don't know who he is, but like he is like when it comes to like some of the songs he was playing, like he is that dude. Like that dude. And he has been that dude for a long time, which was the reason why I felt like um Neil was outmatched the same way that T-Pain was outmatched because you can tell that the younger person learned from the old, older person. Neil learned from John Tay Austin and incorporated some things into his own writing the same way that there's a, there's, there's a little bit, there's a little bit of little John in what T-Pain does. And like, even to the point to where it's like, um, 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 what you call it? Um, by, uh, T-Pain played Buy You a Drink. And you know, Buy You a Drink is a hit, bruh. It's just like, what in the world is going to stop Buy You a Drink in this round? Well, Lil John said, well, I basically have part of the writing credit. Because of the snap your fingers, do your step, we can do it all by yourself thing. And then he plays snap your fingers where that came from. And it was just like, God damn it, little John, fuck you. Like, you know me, like it was just kind of like, you know, it was kind of playful, Mm -hmm. but you can tell there's a couple of those songs and I watched the, I watched the replay. I watched the whole two and a half hours. I, I mean, I watched the whole two and a half hours and you can tell that some of those songs that when Lil John played his song and, and, and fucking he thought he had it like T-Pain thought he had it. And then those shits hit like body blows. You could see it on T-Pain's face. Like, damn, that hurt. Um, and like it, it, I mean, it was just really good. But it was, uh, but in all of these instances with all of these battles, it's a reminder of who these guys are and what they've done to a level that I don't think a lot of a lot of people understand. And like, there's a lot of young people that are are here, uh, and like like witnessing this music. Some of which they witnessing some of this shit for the first time. Because some of this shit came out, they were like, they were toddlers when this shit came out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, we're not even born yet. Yeah. So it's like really, it's like really cool for, for, for them to do it. Like, you know, they're doing it now because everybody at home, they bored. Um, and like Timbaland and Swiss Beats did it. And then it was just like, oh, this, we should take this idea and we should, we should we should give it more credence and we should add more to it and like we should make this a thing. Um now there's been beat battles before. Like in person beat battles before, but the Instagram thing is relatively new and for what the situation we're in right now, this shit works. And like if you get a good matchup, like those two matchups, um, you know, Swiss Beats in, in Timbaland, um, they, they both got smashes. Like they were playing, like they didn't have, they didn't have a structure to theirs. They were just bored and they just played a whole bunch of songs back and forth. Um, and, um, and, and in some of these cases, uh, they're drinking and stuff and sometimes they're getting real fucked up. Um, real fucked up. Like Timbaland was on one. Cause he had been drinking and fucking both T-Pain and Lil John were, uh, they were both drinking tequila. Now Lil John had a bar full of different types of tequila for, according to him, all the, the bar behind him, it was like a full bar behind him and it was all different types of tequila. Uh, and he pulled out some shit I ain't never seen before. I'm not a real drinker. But like my girl who used to work at the ABC store, like when I was explaining to her some of these bottles, 
that look on her face like, Rrr? like it's, it was like, yeah, I ain't never seen no shit like this. He said it was this, but the bottle looked like this. And that ain't no bottle I've ever seen. You know what I mean? Like my man had, well, I mean, and I'm, 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 I mean, the celebrities might have, have access to some stuff that, you know, that they need the ABC store. Some yes, real expensive and then, shit. And, um, and, uh, Lil John is an ambassador for like Don, it's called Don Julio or something like that. I think Lil John is an ambassador for Don Julio. But let me tell you, my man Lil John pulled out this bottle. Now this bottle looks like a regular Patron bottle, except for all of the very, very shiny jewels encrusted in the bottle. <laughs> He has a jewel encrusted bottle of alcohol. <laughs> That's the most little John thing ever. If you really think about it. Yes, it is the most little John thing ever. And at some point he was drinking out of regular cup. At some point he did bring out the pimp cup. And before the thing started, um, uh, T-Pain actually went and got his big ass chain. Have you ever seen the big ass chain? Yeah. It's a big ass chain for anyone who doesn't know. It's a big ass chain that says big ass chain and it is fucking huge. It it looks like it looks like the um the size of this big ass chain is the size of like an iron on t-shirt thing. You know like that big fucking rectangle that yeah. you, where you where you print some shit out on your on your computer and you iron it on your shirt. Yeah. Like it's that size and it's jewel encrusted and it says big ass chain <laughs> attached to a big ass chain. That's what the fuck that is. It's a big ass chain that says big ass chain. <laughs> um, so, um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna get off this subject, but I have been loving this and I've been loving like the DJ sets. I, I tend to at least watch a little bit of the quest love thing every day. Uh, I like Questlove, um, one, because of his, like, his range as a music lover. Uh, but I love Questlove for his musical knowledge. And since he's, he's doing a restream thing where he's on Instagram, he's on Facebook, he's on YouTube all at the same time, he does this thing where he kind of turns the music down or he filters out the top end of the music and he just kind of talks sometimes about music history and all this kind of stuff, like things that you probably don't know about the music and all that kind of stuff. And he does that quite often. And my girlfriend hates it. Like absolutely fucking hates it. She's like, I wish he would just play the song. And I'm like, he's on YouTube. He's going to get fucking flagged for this shit and have all of this shit fucking taken down. If he plays the song all the way through. Um, but I fucking, I enjoy the shit out of that. Um, and I've been checking in with this stuff every day. Like, I'm going to ask you this question. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't mean this in a derogatory way because you have people like, uh, like, um, you know, you have, you have people that are involved in hip hop, um, in stuff like that in, 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 in soul music that have been putting out shows and stuff like that. But are white people doing this too? Because Scott Storch is white. Like, let's be honest, Scott Storch is white, but, like, he is not in a white sphere. Yeah, I've seen, um, actually, because I, I was, because I heard, a, like, a concert that happened, and I was like, who the fuck? For one, the people that's going to the concert, but then two, the promoters and the actual artists. Like, there's so many artists that are doing things online that, like, they they couldn't, too, so I was just like, fuck them. I don't even know who they were. Because my um my brother in law went to a concert and my my stepdad like not my brother in law but my stepbrother and he he got kind of reamed from my stepdad about that and he's like thirty nine <laughs> but like but yeah <laughs> but anyway because I know I didn't watch it but I know that Willie Nelson was doing something online but I have seen the dude from Death Cat for Cutie like pretty much every day playing songs on Facebook Live. And um, I've seen... There's a metal band called Code Orange, and that they, they were going to do this uh, album release party or whatever, and then that got canceled, so they streamed 
their entire concert on Twitch just to an empty room. And I thought all that stuff was like super awesome. Because they're not going, they they might get some ad revenue or whatever, but it's nothing like of what they would get for actually doing the show. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's still cool that they were trying to do it. But yeah, so yeah, uh, other people are are doing that kind of thing, but nothing like you're talking about, like a battle. But well, it's it's both. Um, it started off with a DJ um, DJ D Nice. Who used to be with uh, Boogie Down Productions back in the day, uh, and he started he started a big Instagram party, and like this is around the time when everybody was first like stuck at home, and so like no one else had anything to do except for do that, and like famous people were showing up, politicians were showing up to his Instagram, his Instagram party. Like the craziest shit. Like if you see the list of names that kind of showed up to this Instagram party, you're like, are you fucking kidding me? Oprah showed up to this bitch. Fucking, you know, Bernie Sanders and fucking Joe Biden showed up to this bitch. Elizabeth Warren probably would be there. Like if this was an actual show, I think, I think Liz Warren would have made an appearance. She (laughs) seems like she's, she seems like she's down a little bit. Like she may not have been there for a whole a long time, but Liz Warren would have made an appearance. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like when, so like because like typically like does somebody like Bernie Sanders show up to your show? Yeah, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and cut this off now. I now I I don't think that it was actually them. Like somebody on their team was just like, "Yo, there's lots of people here." Like lots of people here and you may want to show your face in here. Like, you know, that type of thing. The fucking T Pain, the T Pain and Lil John shit, at one point it was up to almost two hundred and sixty thousand people on Instagram Live. Two hundred and sixty thousand people. That's at the point to where like there is no like uh control in the chat. Oh no, absolutely not. It's just like but, <laughs> The, the cool, one of the cool things that I think Quest Love is doing, Quest Love does his every day, but I think Quest Love has a private chat and all of the famous people that he knows know how to get into that chat. So like, well, all of these people, I used to, I typically watch it on YouTube because YouTube has the best quality. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, and the funniest thing, here's the funniest thing about Quest Love's DJ sets. You know, you do know who Quest Love is, right? Yes. Roots. Yes. And the Tonight Show. Um, well, yeah. Quest, every, every <laughs> time, every time Quest Love mentions Twitch, all of the old people go, what the fuck is a Twitch? <laughs> like, it is the funniest thing ever. It, it is the funniest thing ever. But he, but, um, I think he has a private chat because when he is responding to people and it could, it, it could be he's just in the Instagram chat, which is possible, but like he is responding and, and he notices when all of the famous people come in. And he is responding to them, even though people are on, on YouTube talking to him like it fucking matters. It's just like, he doesn't give a shit about you. He's talking to all his fucking famous friends, dude. Like, um, but like it, but he does it that way to where it's like, you know, you know, you're not able to control the chat and at that, at that point. So like, I know there's ways why to be in where chat? That they can watch a, a hell of slow down chat to where they might not respond to everything and they might not respond to it in time but it will definitely be like if it's going they, like I've seen a slow down chat on I've seen a slow down chat on YouTube I don't know about the other places but I've seen it it says it says that the chat is slowed down right but um but yeah I haven't checked out turntable lab because to see if they've been doing anything, but um, I do know before all this stuff they were having a bunch of. Is there like a record store? But they have an online store, and that's kind of what I follow because they have a. They sell like vinyl and stuff like that, but they also on Facebook Live they'll do like turntable like shows and stuff, and that stuff is awesome. Like it, it's beyond hip hop, like. These dudes, it's like funk and all this kind of stuff. And what they're doing is just like, it's less like 
and more like queuing up different things to play at certain times and just kind of a flow and it's it's super cool. But um, yeah, Qu- Quest Loves usually has a theme. Like he did a Stevie Wonder stream where it was like a bunch of like Stevie Wonder stuff and stuff that Stevie has like been on or stuff that he wrote or produced and stuff like that. That was a seven hour stream. Seven hour streams. <laughs> um, and like, you know, so he's had, he's had themes. Sometimes it's about a person, uh, like it's their birthday or something like that. And he's done this every day for over a week. Um, and it's just like, Hey, it's this person's birthday. So I'm gonna rock out to some stuff that they like and stuff connected to the things that they like mm-hmm. that type of thing. Um, and like, it's just, it's just really fucking cool. Like I, I think this is really, I think this is really dope. And I think it's a real good, uh, I think it's a real good thing to do with everybody being st- stuck at home. Like at least some people who crave a communal experience can be a part of something like this from their own home. I know that it doesn't, take the you know for 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 people who are extroverted like this doesn't take the place of that but at least they have something they can do yeah and i think i think all of this shit is like super fucking cool all right so you want to move on to some shit sure man okay so i have not watched tiger king yet my girlfriend watched the first episode like yesterday or something like that. I eventually I'm gonna get to Tiger King. Yeah, um, I watched like three or four episodes before I got tired, and but Amber finished it, and um, you know, and so, but I, I mean, it is enjoyable. I uh, it's it, it's pretty crazy. It's crazy that these people are freaking real. Like, because my yeah, brother was true. like. Like when he first started watching it, he thought it was like one of those mockumentaries. You know what I mean? I was like, "No, nah, this yeah. is real as fuck." <laughs> yeah, because someone yeah, told me that since there's a lot of footage of him being interviewed to where like from like a few years ago, it started out that they were making a movie just about him. Like he he was wanting to move like a um like a documentary about his life. And then all this shit happened. They were like, and I'm pretty sure the people that are making the documentary are like, holy shit, rewind. Let's go back. <laughs> this is gold. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, but, but yeah. Uh, but that, that's, a, that's all that my last week, uh, that was all my, my social media was about is about fucking coronavirus and, Tiger King, and now <laughs> now is now is coronavirus. Tiger King and Ozark, which I have not watched a second of Ozark. I know it's on my list. I was gonna watch it, and then every time I go to watch it, it's gonna it's like, you know, it's it, something else just kind of came up. Yeah. Um. So I, I just I just haven't haven't made it there. I watched the the new season of Future Man came out, and I fucking loved Future Man. But it was only eight episodes, and they were both like half. They were all like half an hour episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I made it through. I watched. I watched the last. It was the last season too. I watched the last season on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Shit was just over. We also I really, go ahead. We also finished up on uh, uh, John Wick. We watched John Wick three. So I have never seen a John Wick movie. They they are enjoyable. Because at first I, I was like, everyone is just like loving this shit. And I was like, it, and then when I went back and I watched the first one, I was like, I, I did really dig it. Like, because it was, um, it wasn't, um, I love the over the top, like 80s action or whatnot, but it was really wasn't that. It was very stylistic and kind of like, uh, have you seen Drive? Drive? Trying to think drive. As dude from Notebook. Um, what's his name? Is that Drive or Baby Driver? Baby Driver, I think, is influenced by Drive, but Drive is from like two thousand eleven or so, twelve. I know of a movie called Drive, but I think is I think it's a little bit older than that. Um yeah. and that stars the dude from Only the Strong, you know what I'm saying? 
Oh, uh, yeah. But, but yeah, it, it's more like to where things will be, like, out of place to where, like, it flows so well. Like, everything's, like, kind of quiet, and there'll be, like, some sort of, like, violent action scene, but there's, like, some sort of dreamy pop music playing in the background and like because it's like at some sort of weird club or whatever and then there's parts to where like the music be yes, building up and then during the action scene there is no music no sounds except freaking bones being breaking yeah yeah, yeah the drive that i know of came in 1997 so like we're not talking about the same drive i know what you're talking about i know what you're talking about but uh and i just looked it up but I don't know about this one. I know about the one that came out in 97. But yeah, it's it's like it's like ninja or it's like kung fu with guns. <laughs> speaking kung fu, speaking kung fu with guns. Have I ever talked on the show that I finished that Wu Assassins uh show? Um I don't think so. Maybe you you might have had, but because the, the dude from Only the Strong is one of the monks that is imprinted on this dude. Like, it's, let me tell you about Wu Assassins. This shit dumb as hell, bro. Like, it's so dumb, but I couldn't stop watching. Like, <laughs> it is, it, I mean, it is dumb. Like, it is the dumbest. Like, it's, this shit doesn't make any sense at all. None whatsoever. But I couldn't look away. It was like, it's, it was really like watching a train wreck or a car wreck. I could, it's like, I know that this is horrible, but I can't stop looking. <laughs> and I would be very, very surprised if Wu Assassins get a season two. Like, real, real surprise. But, like, depending on how many people watch this shit and was glued to it like I was, this shit might actually get a second season. If it got, if it does get a second season, this shit ain't going no further than that because this shit is dumb. Is it, like, so bad it's good or is it just bad? I mean, it's gotta be so bad. It's good because you were glued to it. It's 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 so bad. It's interesting. I would not go out of my way and say that it's so bad. It's good. Okay. It's so bad. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it's just like I you you're just wondering. Do you know what you know what Wu Assassins is? A perfect analogy. Okay. Wu Assassins is the first season of Iron Fist. Well, you're just watching to see how this is going to go. Yes, that's what Wu Assassins is. Like, you're watching it like, how the fuck does this shit actually turn around to something worth me, worth my time? And it never and does. Some, and then, and some, yeah. people, some people think it never does. I think Iron Fist has some redeeming qualities. Uh, first of all, most of all, it was Ward. Ward was the most redeeming part of, like, Ward's journey over the course of all of Iron Fist is, like, the best thing ever. And like the cool, one of the cool thing is like seeing them in other shows, mm-hmm. um, because I've been watching Blind Spot and fucking Ward was in Blind Spot, but he had a beard, so I it took me a minute to realize that that was Ward. Um, and then like in uh, the second season of uh, Alter Carbon, um, the chick who played Misty is is in the second season of Alter Carbon. And you know, like all that kind of stuff. Seeing seeing all of these people around. Oh yeah, and I'm watching that um that show. What's it called? Uh, what's it called? The the show with the musical. Fuck, I can't think of it. Is Zoe's extraordinary playlist or something like that? Mm. Um, it's basically is is a show, but it's like a musical. Um, the the guy from Luke Cage, the the that was um, that was the 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 bad lady, the bad ladies. Uh, uh, her her assistant was I can't even think of her name right now. What was her name in uh, in Luke Cage? I don't remember, man. The bad lady from Luke Cage. The bad lady from Luke Cage. That's her name. Really? Yeah. Did you not watch? Did you want? Did you not watch Luke Cage? No. You didn't watch Luke Cage. Uh, I I haven't watched any of the Netflix um Marvel stuff. Mariah, Mariah Dillard, um, um, her, uh, her, her assistant plays in that. Uh, he plays in the Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist show, which I think, let's be honest, right? I think the concept for Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist could lead to some really dope ass things. 
are those things ever going to happen? Absolutely not. Because by all accounts, it's like a musical, which is like a musical musical. But the idea that she has, uh, do you know anything about the show? Mm-mm. Okay, so she is at the beginning. Um, her her father has some sort of disease that basically renders him mute, and like can't and he can't really do a whole lot. It's, most of the time, he just kind of sits there. Um, and she is worried that she might have something similar, so she goes to get an MRI. While she's getting the MRI, the guy's playing music. An earthquake happens, and for some reason, all of the music, all of the music. Not just the music he was playing. All of the music is downloaded into her brain. Now, she hears what people are thinking, but through song. And like one, one, one of her coworkers, the dude from, uh, this isn't, this isn't like a huge, uh, spoiler or anything. Cause I believe it happens in the first so episode. So she has all the music, even like Cannibal Corpse and shit. She has all of the music, but like it's musical music that you could that you could make musical shit out of. But um, one of the first one, of, I think it's on the first episode. Uh, one of her coworkers, the dude that played in uh, Luke Cage, is uh, singing the uh, singing the Gears of War song. He's singing Mad World. He's singing Mad World. And then like, you know, like she's she just witnessed him singing Mad World like to him. He's just sitting there. To her, he's singing Mad World, basically saying that there's something going on, something going on with him. Uh, and so like, it's like her dealing is the, the whole show is basically her dealing with what she actually hears these people saying. And I think it's kind of cool, but it would be a lot cooler if it had more than like musical music. If it was like, you know, like some, like more, you know, but like more diverse music, I would say. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's, but, um, that's been good. Um, Blind Spot has completely jumped the shark. Like, holy fuck. Like, has a, has a show that had a really interesting premise jump the fuck out of a shark. Man, the writing on this that used to be really fucking good all of a sudden is terrible. Like, where I am, like, predicting what's gonna happen i'm just kind of like you know like it's supposed to be like a mystery and it's just like yeah you know that random character that they just added a name to at the beginning of this episode because like you know you've been you've you've been with these people for three fucking seasons and then all of a sudden the one guy bumps into this lady and it's just like hey janet Sorry, I bumped into you. And then, like, then there's this big fucking mystery. There's a problem around here, and we don't know where it's coming from. It's coming from fucking Janet. You do realize it's just coming from fucking Janet, right? Like, it's so fucking predictable at this point. Like, duh. Like, who does not know that it's fucking Janet? At this point, like... You know, like you introduced a new named character and you think that we're not going to notice that something is going to happen to that character. Damn it, Janet. Yeah, damn it, Janet. Like, that, I mean, I can't remember. I don't think her name is Janet, but that was just the first name that came to my head. Right. Um, but like, it's just like that thing, like the, the writing has gotten that fucking lazy. And like, it's not like they set this stuff up and then like in the next episode that the thing happens and then it turns out to be Janet. No. It's that same fucking episode. It's the same episode. At the very beginning of the episode, he bumps into Janet and goes, sorry about that Janet. It was like, oh oh, Janet, just leave him alone. He's an asshole. And then it's like, alright, cool. And it was like, we got a real problem. We got a leak. There's a mole on the team. It's fucking Janet. Like, it's really fucking Janet, dude. (laughs) And like that is what's been happening to me uh over, over over watching this season. Like last season was a motherfucker. I was just like, yo, how does a d- d- insert character here all of a sudden who who was basically like a henchman basically, all of a sudden this person is a criminal mastermind. When the fuck did this happen? 
You know what I mean? Like that type of thing. I, I'm not spoiling anything. I'm, I'm not spoiling anything. But basically, somebody who was a henchman who ends up surviving, uh, all of a sudden in the third season becomes a criminal fucking mastermind. And you're like, how the fuck did this happen? This person has showed no aptitude for the things that they are doing right now. And all of a sudden, they are fucking amazing at everything. I don't even remember what show you're talking about right now. Blind Spot. Oh, okay. It's the chick from Thor. But, um, but yeah, we also, um, watched, uh, The Wolf of Wall Street for the first time ever. That's a good fucking movie. Yeah. Not fucking leave it! <laughs> that movie. Best, that, was the, that was the best show ever. That movie has been memed so hard for, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah, I'm not fucking leaving is actually on the soundboard for the Dream Team. We don't use the soundboard very often. Well, fuck it. We don't record the Dream Team very often, but it's it's still on the soundboard. <laughs> nice. But, um, but, yeah, have you played anything of note? Oh, I, here's here's the one thing I want to say about Wolf of Wall Street. Okay. The, the, fuck, the fucked up part about Wolf of Wall Street is, like, the majority of that shit is absolutely true. Yeah, <laughs> the majority of that is absolutely true. This shit happened. This shit happened, and that is the craziest shit ever. Like the, the like how you you watching this and like yo, this is the most bat shit insane thing I have ever seen. It's just like this is someone's life. <laughs> like someone someone lived this shit. Like you know what I mean. Like that's crazy to me. Um, have I played anything? I've played. Basically two games, and it's the same two games I've been playing. I played some Division. Um, I did play some live. Actually, I did play some NCAA. Um, all right. So which which order would you like me to go in? Um, NCAA. That one. NCAA. There we go. Okay, so I played NCAA right. I recorded the intro video to the season. Of like the, the, the Scarcasm Bulldog season where we are all in the game. Mm-hmm. So I played the first episode. I have not edited this thing because like as it stands now, this thing is like, like almost an hour. So I'm going to have to edit the fuck out of this. So it's not coming out, but I'm, I'm going to give you a fucking preview. Okay. Where I looked at these teams and of course the Scarcasm team was like really awesome. It was supposed to be really awesome, but because I'm not actually playing the game, the, the team just started doing dumb shit. And <laughs> we, we got our, we got, we got whooped by Wyoming in our first game. Fucking Wyoming. Like fucking Wyoming. We lost in the, we lost in the first game, but I'm going to let y'all see how the fuck we lost. And like, oh, was it first my of fault? all, I realized I, no, it is not your fault. Your, your, your tight end. It's, it's, it's not your fault. Okay. Basically it was pimps. Basically it was pimps fault. Okay. And <laughs> my, my, and, and my fault, AKA my fault, AKA Mason Sims, AKA, uh, the quarterback's fault because I cannot pick a fucking defense to save my life. And like, I could not stop fucking Wyoming. I couldn't stop Wyoming. And like they, they, and then like pimp started throwing interceptions and shit and it just got out of hand. Like it just really got out of hand. And I, do you know, I ain't changed no sliders or anything like that. I kind of left everything standard the way that it was. I'm going to have to go back and look up some sliders. I think I have some sliders in mind. Um, the, the sliders are the settings for like each of the positions and how well they can do in one aspect or another. Um, uh, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to change some sliders or some difficulty in how well I can get this thing to work. Oh, you Blake, are you still there? Yeah. Your screen, your screen for us for a second. Oh my. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, th- the first episode we lost to Wyoming. I got to edit this shit and like, I'm kind of hesitant to edit this shit because that loss was painful. Like, like that shit hurt though. Like it really hurt because we had a really good team and this was our first game and like this shit really sucked. But see, here's the thing that I thought about and. Um, you could tell I don't really talk to a whole lot of people these days because I'm talking my ass off. Um, I realized that like putting like all of the original characters that were in until I added the rest of y'all, all of the original characters are freshmen. So 
like like Pimp is the quarterback, I'm the running back, you know, like stuff like that. Um, they're all freshmen, so they are very prone to mistakes because they're all freshmen. They're really good freshmen, but they are still fucking freshmen. So like I can't I gotta stop trying to be so hard on myself because like everybody everybody that I've added to this game is like a freshman or a sophomore. So like these are these are young people doing young people shit. And hopefully they get better over time. But uh that first game hurt. <laughs> All right, what do you want me to talk about next? Uh what what was the other list? I played a little bit of live and I played a ton of division. Let's um do live and end off on division. Okay, so I play some live. Um, I play some live on my own. I really went. I'm really meant to get back and do some more uh, live streaming because I thought that worked out really well for what I wanted to do personally. Um, but I, I really was not feeling very good this weekend, so I, hopefully I can get back to some live streaming stuff sometime soon. But I play a little bit offline. I even played a smidge, a very very small amount of 2K, uh, but not any. Like I played like one game of 2K and was just like, man, I don't even like this shit. Um, and that was pretty much it. So I was watching a live stream of some marching band shit, and I just kind of sat here playing live for a little bit with a character that I'm not going to use on uh, a live stream or a recording. Okay, division time. Yep. Let me tell you what happened to me yesterday in the division. Okay, what tier so, are you at now? Oh, I was playing with my I was playing with my character that finished New York. Okay. So I have three I have three characters. One was my max level character that was world tier five already. I have the one that I started with y'all. And even though we were just basically got to world tier one, I played a little bit with that character and I'm on a higher world tier. Now, because uh, I didn't really have anybody to play with and I didn't really want to use one of the other characters. So I just used that one um, because it was something that I felt like I needed to do. And I didn't really have I didn't really want to wait. Uh, and then I have my character that I finished New York with. Um, so um, my cousin calls me and says that he wants to play. And so we played the Pentagon missions. The Pentagon missions were added on later. Now. After the update, the difficulty in this game is crushing, especially if you have a full team of four people. So what happened to us yesterday, we were playing the game, me, my cousin, and uh, my homeboy DJ, and you know his homeboy DJ, and my homeboy now DJ, we were all playing the game, and they belong to a clan with some really high-level division players. One of those people showed up to our game while we we were in the middle of a very long mission. And you know, when someone shows up, the difficulty goes up because now it has to accommodate four people. And then he left and the difficulty did not go back down. Mm -hmm. We got, we got stuck on a mission for two hours, just the end of this one mission, just failing, going back, failing, going back, failing, going back, just to the checkpoint of this one mission that we were trying to get through. And it got so bad, like, I, you, you know, like, they were cussing out the dude in the clan. Like, they were like, you know, like, man, and I'm like, yo, you just come in here and then you just leave. Like, you better, you know, you better hope one of your kids was sick or some shit like that for doing this to us. Like, they were mad. Like, this is this two hours of doing just this last part of this mission. Like, two hours. So we just kept going at it and losing, kept going at it and losing. And I guess we just decided, like, this shit just ain't going to happen. So we were playing it on the challenging level. Uh, and so... He just said, forget it. I'm going to scrap it. We got to start over. So we started over, put the joint on hard. The three of us went right through it like it was nothing, like absolutely nothing. After spending two hours on trying to get just past the end, we just ran through this thing. But that's that tells you like what kind of fucked up shit that the division has where you, you know, like. Hey, like, it's like, it's like Borderlands where, you know, someone joins you, the game gets a little bit harder. Cool. But like, unlike Borderlands, when that person leaves, 
this shit is supposed to go back down and it didn't. Right. And that's a problem with this game. Um, but all in all, I, I'm, I am enjoying the time that I play with people. I, I don't 100% enjoy the time that I play by myself. So typically when I'm by myself and there's no one else online, I will, I will sign up to play the game with randoms, like go to a mission that I want to do and then do the matchmaking for the mission and then just leave afterwards. Um, I do that a lot when I'm playing by myself, but, um, but yeah, I, I really like the division, but there's some, there's some things going on and like the community is really pissed off because like a bunch of people just got banned for using a, some sort of a damage glitch. That's supposed to make you super awesome, but it's still a glitch. And like, even if you were in the room with somebody who was using that glitch, you still got banned. Reportedly, it's over a million people got banned. That's like a big chunk of their player base. Exactly. Especially their their player base since, you know, there's more than their player base before they offered the shit for $3 everywhere. Right. So... But yeah, apparently all of, a lot of people got banned. They are not releasing any numbers of how many people got banned, so we don't know for certain. But the community is ablaze with their disdain for massive and um and you know like yeah, you can be mad at me for exploiting your game, but like when we brought this shit to your attention, why the fuck didn't you fix it? That's kind of what the what the community is about right now. Right, because I, I mean, because yeah, most, most I mean. games would do that. There's been things like exploits in Borderlands and stuff. They would come out. You wouldn't get banned for using it. You they would just fix it, and you can't do it anymore. Yeah, but they if but Destiny, they do this in two K too. If Destiny blocked or banned everybody that used the loot cave when that game first started, there'd be nobody playing Destiny. You know, that is the, uh, that is the example that they keep using. Like, why can't Massive, the Massive is the company who actually made the division. Why can't Massive actually be more like Bungie? It was like, all right, you got us. Like, we gonna, we gonna fix this shit, but like, man, you got it. So just go ahead. We, we got you, we got your ass next time. And Bungie is not really in the habit of like trying to get rid of their player base. They're just saying, all right, you took advantage of this shit. All right, cool. And they even made like a little joke. Like he, if you went to, like today, if you went to the loot cave, there's like, a, like a dead hive member and you click on him. It says like something about the millions that died there or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> So I mean, so they owned it, you know, which is cool. Because yeah, and I think that's the better way to do it than to just ban a whole bunch of people, half of your fucking player base, reportedly half of your player base, uh, and just kind of fuck everything up. Like they they just started doing seasons over there now because like Division really wants to be Diablo more than more than Destiny. Division really wants to be Diablo. Right. Um, so they just, they just started seasons and all of this kind of stuff. And like when they first started the fucking seasons, there was a glitch to where it's like you couldn't progress past like the very first thing because like a certain person that you talked to would, it wouldn't activate. And then there was a shit where once you get past New York, you can just automatically set the level of your world. So I can set it on normal, hard, challenging, heroic, legendary, or whatever. I could just set the whole world is now on this level. But there was a problem. If I had mine set on like challenging and I, and I played a game with you and yours is set to normal or hard. When I went back to my game, me being in the thing with you reset all of my progress. Hmm. Every last bit of it. So like there's, there's still some problems in this game and I really like playing the game with friends, but there's still a lot of problems in this game and people are fed up about this shit. Right. But yeah, um, I, I played some, got back into playing a little bit of ESO with my brother just kind of doing our daily dungeon or whatever. 
But, I mean, it's not like that's to where it's like, oh, a set daily that you have to do or you're going to miss that. No, it's more like the first dungeon that you do a day gives you more XP. And then there's the experience scrolls as well that you'll just get from whatever randomly. You know, it's just a pickup that you can get. So if you use that and the the first dungeon and there's a, like an event going on right now where you eat this cake and you get like double XP for an hour. You do a dungeon with all that. Uh, I like leveled up like three times and I'm like level 35. <laughs> there was a shit ton of XP. So, so we've been doing that. It's been fun. And, um, I actually started playing quantum break. Yeah. Um, how that, are you, are you watching the TV show bits? Yeah. Uh, I've been enjoying the story actually. Uh, and, and all that stuff. Don't, the, don't Iceman play in that shit. Iceman. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? It was an Aaron Ashmore or whatever. Wasn't, wasn't he Iceman in one of the X-Men movies? Hold on. What is his name? Aaron Ash. Oh, Aaron Ashmore is the main character. Yeah. That's yeah. It. Don't Iceman play in that shit. Yeah. But yeah, he, um, and the, the Hobbit dude is his brother. And, um, he also played in Lock and Key, which was, which was actually pretty decent. Nice. But, but, but yeah, I've been enjoying it. The, the, the combat's actually really fun. Because it's, you know, you got different powers and stuff, and it's time-based. And I've always kind of had a affinity for time-based games. Not time, like time things, but time manipulation, I guess is the right word. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of the most OP power ever. Is. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's been cool. I haven't finished with it. And, and the, the show part's really well done. Like, it literally feels like a TV show. Which it kind of is, but, um... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause I was, I was actually really wanting to play Control, their third game. And, um, but I was like, I haven't played Quantum Break yet and I've had it forever. So might as well I just saw, play that. I saw Sam playing. I watched, I watched Sam's, uh, Twitch stream playing Control once. Control looks, uh, Control is much more like, um, uh, Alan Wake. It is very Alan Wakey. Okay. Well, I felt that, except for the story and the the daytime bits, like I took a screenshot of Quantum Break, and then when I was I logged into Steam, I was like, "When when did I play Island Wake?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, that, that's actually Quantum Break," because there was a nighttime shot, and it it still felt because they Remedy has a certain style of like lighting and fog and stuff that. It feels similar, but it looks really good. I, I do really enjoy their how they do lighting and stuff. But it's definitely it's a it is an art style that is definitely them. You can tell this remedy. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but yeah. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. I I I got this wrong. Aaron Ashmore has a twin brother named Sean Ashmore. Sean Ashmore was. Iceman and Sean Ashmore was in Quantum Break. Really? Yeah. Because I searched up tw- Aaron Ashmore, and and I was like, "Holy shit! Yeah, that's him." But no, it's not him because they're twins, right? Yeah, it's a twin brother. Yep, they look exactly the same. Yeah, that's that's crazy. So 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 Aaron played in Lock and Key. Aaron played in Designated Survivor. Aaron played in Sm- Smallville. He was Jimmy Olsen in Smallville. Well, Sean was also in The Following. Is that the show that I liked? The Following is the one with um the with, the the the, with, the with, terrorist group that wanted to be like uh that was very Poe centric. It had uh, Kevin Bacon in it. Yep. Yeah. I like that shit. But, um. But yeah, um, and, and like in like the second episode, they played uh, change. <laughs> so I, I know that's probably why you like it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> the, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing. Um, I even went back to um, Star Wars for a little bit. I've been having a lot of ga- gaming ADD to where I like, especially when it comes to these long games, I'll be like, 
man, I'm really digging this. And then I'm like, do I really want to play this right now? I've been, I've already played it for 10 hours. <laughs> like, I want, I want to watch the new Star Wars so bad. I want to rent it, but I'm like, I've been paying for Disney Plus and I barely use it. So I'm waiting for the Star Wars to get to Disney Plus, but like, this shit is getting on my nerves. Waiting for Star Wars because it was supposed to be, uh, it was supposed to be out on the 19th. Well, it was supposed to come out for, I think it was supposed to be out for, on the 19th. On but plus. I'm getting tired of fucking waiting for this shit. Yeah. Cause I really want to see it because I've, so far, I have avoided most of the spoilers. I got spoiled a little bit, but I don't think the stuff that I got spoiled on is anything really major, which I, I'm, I commend myself from for like staying spoiler free from that this whole time, but bruh, it's hard, and I re- I would really just rather watch the movie and be done with it. Yeah, that's kind of like how it was uh, a couple of years ago. Like pretty much every podcast in our sphere would do spoiler casts of whatever, even like Deadpool and shit. And I'll be like, well, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm going to have to put these on the back burner. <laughs> yes. But, um. I've done that. I've done that a lot. But yeah. But yeah. Damn. What the hell? But, um. Your phone popping, bro. Yeah. Uh, it's my brother. He, uh, he, wants, to, he wants to play ESO? Uh, well, no. It's getting kind of late for him, but he wants me to make him a, a Twitter template. Not Twitter, um, okay. Twitch. Okay. But, um, what up? but yeah, I, I think we've, I mean, we've been going for over an hour, so. I got one more thing I want to talk about. Okay. I've been watching the shit out of a, uh, YouTube series. Uh, it's from the YouTube channel Screen Rant, and it's called Pitch Meeting, where it's like, this, the the guy is playing two characters. He's playing the guy who's writing your favorite movies, and then he's he's explaining it to the corporate guy. And like some of the stuff that he's some of the stuff, um, that you know, I, the some of the stuff that he's explaining, the way he's explaining how these movies work out. That, like, do not watch these if you haven't seen the movie in most cases or you don't want to get spoiled. But for all of the movies that you've seen, you can watch these and it is hilarious because it'll be like, um, you know, like he'll, he'll point out like glaring problems with the story. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, hey, this person, you know, like at the beginning of the Phantom Menace, when they were surrounded by the battle droids, they kind of like force sped away. And it was just like, oh, that would that would be awesome for them to use ever it, uh, for the for to use in the future. And he's like, no, they're never going to use that again. Why? Because I forgot about it when I was running. Um, like you know, like that type of stuff. Like it, it he's explaining like all of these things that are happening in these movies, and some of this stuff, like you completely fucking didn't think about while watching these movies. And that's the part that I like about it so much. Like these, like plot holes, or like like how convenient this one thing happens, uh, and all of this kind of stuff. He's going at it from the perspective of he wrote it that way, or he didn't intend it for it to be written that way, but like something happened to his computer. So I guess it stuck. Like he says that for a lot of the placeholders, uh, he says, he says it for a lot of the dialogue choices in the Star Wars prequels. It was just like, oh, that, you know, oh, he was like, you, you would say, he would say like, this is what happens. And he go, oh, that was placeholder dialogue, right? Uh, he was like, yeah, I planned on changing that, but then like, I forgot my password and now I'm locked out and we're stuck with this. Uh, you know, like that type of stuff, like, you know, cause people complain about the dialogue in the Star Wars prequels, like forever until like the, the, the sequel trilogy where all of a sudden the prequels are awesome now. Um, <laughs> but like, I really, really dig these. I've watched a ton of these, like an absolute ton. Like every one of them that comes up, if it's a movie I've seen or a movie I don't care to see or I'm not going to see anytime soon, I'll watch that shit. I even posted a couple in the, uh, in the discord that I thought were the, you know, I thought were funny. 
So like go to Screen Rant and watch these for whatever your um the the movies that you like. And I think it's very clever. Uh I I I think it's super clever. Oh. So I think that's it for me. Thanks, man. All right. So um for everybody, um I I've I've enjoyed this. Um I I don't get to talk about like shit that I care about very much because I'm constantly surpri- uh, surrounded by uh coronavirus disasterbation. Uh, like there's a lot of coronavirus disasterbation going on right now. Like people seem to be getting off the worst as gets. They seem to be getting off and they all about it. And it's just like I'd rather just kind of live my life and like not be fucking afraid to do anything like yes i'm cautious i wash my hands all that kind of stuff but like i don't want this thing to consume me it's already consumed most of the world but like i need i need y'all to kind of come down on this a little bit like i get it um so i um yeah, I, I, and I'm enjoying all of the stuff on YouTube. Uh, I'm enjoying all of the Instagram live stuff. Um, there's supposed to be a battle and it got postponed. Teddy Riley and Babyface were going to battle. For an old person like me, that was epic. That sounds epic as hell. Even though Teddy Riley is at a disadvantage, but it still sounds awesome to me. And I, and yeah, I, I hope that at some point, um, when we get, when everything gets back to normal, someone actually turns this into something, uh, m- much more major. Um, and yeah, I really, I'm, I'm really digging this stuff right now. I wish I could be at home with the rest of y'all. I know some of y'all that are at home, uh, wish that y'all could be going to work, but I, I wish the opposite for myself. Like, I really wish I could be at home with the rest of y'all sometimes, but, uh, yeah. I think that's all we have. I'm going to edit that video soon. Um, for uh, the homie Chase, I'm Scarfinger. This is Scarcasm. And we're out of here. Peace out to the Warriors, yo. Later. I like that shit, yeah, boy. I'm telling you, woke. I'm telling... All right, I ain't gonna talk.